Uh, thank you for being patient. Uh, here we are again. Okay, so um, we are still on unique constraints. So, um, so if you look at this particular syntax, you realize that a uh, sorry the ID that is the column ID will have unique. Um, it will have unique uh, values to it because you have attached that uh, particular constraint. Um, so creating tables, um, again using constraints, so we have looked at the, the, the null constraint, we have looked at the unique constraint, now we have what we call a check constraint. Now a check constraint specifies a condition that must be true. In other words, check is used to limit the value range that can be placed in a column. For example, if you define check on a single column, it allows only certain values for that particular column. The same thing, if you define check on a, on a table, it will allow only certain values for that particular table. So, for example, if you look at this, uh, if you look at this uh, syntax below there, um, it, that syntax is a uh, we're trying to uh, create a table, but um, alongside we are saying we want to check age. Okay, we want to check the age. So <clears throat> that syntax specific uh, that syntax means that you are going to create a table with range number which is a not null, um, with a not null constraint. In other words, no values can be left null. Has a last name that is a virtual, 15 characters. It, it should also not be left null. First name, the age, which is an int. Then we're saying check. Check that everyone who enters the value, the, the, their records in this table ha has their age above 25. So that is what check means. That anyone who will be entering data in that table should be of 25 years of age and above. So that is what that essentially means. Now, um, again, we have... Um, um, Oh, sorry, sorry, that, that was for check. And then we go to the primary key as another constraint. This is something that we have done. We have spoke, spoken about it over and over again. We say that a primary key uniquely identifies a row in a table. And the primary key constraint is the one that helps us to enforce the entity integrity rule. The entity integrity rule is such that all primary key values have to be they are not supposed to be null values and they cannot be left. Sorry, they are not supposed to be null values. That is the primary, that is the entity integrity rule. Then um, the refresher integrity rule that we use to enforce the FK relationship between two uh, tables states that um, the figures of the primary key must match the figures of the, the foreign key. In other words, the values, all values of the primary key must match the values of the foreign key or else the foreign key values have got to be left wholly now. So when whatever we are going to do uh, from, from now onwards is going to be tagged on primary key, foreign key, which is a critical aspect in enforcing the database rules. So constraints can be uh, in two categories. You have the column constraint, and then you have what you call the table constraints. So the, ta the column con constraint refers to a single column. You, in other words, you attach a constraint on a given column, like the, this, given, this example that you see down here, we have attached, this is an example of a column constraint. We have attached the not null constraint on range number. We have attached the not null constraint on last name. Also, we have attached the check constraint on age. Now, this is an example of um, a column constraint. <clears throat> then we have what we call a table constraint, okay? A table constraint. Now, a table constraint 
references one or more columns and is defined after the column list. This is what this means. It means that if you have all the, you have so many columns, you have range number, last name, first name, age, date of birth, etc. All these are your columns. You have defined them. You have given them data types. If they have domains, you have given them domains and any other kind of um, kind of structure that you want to give them. Then at the end of your column list, then you can attach what we call it. Uh, you can have a table constraint so this comes at the end of all the columns that you have specified but we are saying that um, <clears throat> the table constraint can define any constraint except for the null value this essentially means that for null values it has to specifically be attached on the column it has to be on the column level for all the, uh, all other constraints like the primary key constraint, the foreign key constraint, the check constraint, the default constraint, all those other constraints, you can have them at a table level, which we call the table constraint, except for the not now. The not now constraint, you can only have it on the column constraint, on, at the level of the column. So this is the general syntax of the create table, you have the table name, you have the column name, you have the data type, you have the domain, you have the column constraint, that is the not now, if you're going to put it there. And then you have the table constraint that you can define. You can have a table column, the, a table constraint, and then you define the column name that you want to attach this, uh, uh, this constraint. So I hope I am clear. Um, I only pray that I am clear, but I can reiterate on this. I am saying that if you're creating uh, constraints like the check, not now, sorry, check, primary key, foreign key, uh, default, unique, etc. You can create them on both at the const at the table level and also the column level. But at the table level, what you cannot define, the not now, you cannot define it at a table level that has to specifically be on the uh, on the on the column level. Okay, so um, these are just uh, this is just an example. The upper example is an example of a column constraint where you create a table called student with the range number vacha pk name vacha dob date gender. Uh, char with a not now. Okay, so you realize that not now is a constraint on gender, and then PK is also, which is primary key, is also a constraint on range number at a column level. At a table level, you have the same table where you have also specified. Um, where you have, if you look at this table, you see gender has a not null because we say that not null cannot be at the table level. That is why you have specifically put it on the on the column. But then we want to specify this table above before the constraint does not have a primary key. So now we are going to put a primary key at the table constraint. So you define, you say constraint, students. Students is the table name. Okay, so constraint students underscore you say range number because we have to, we want the range number range number at this at this time is the column so range number underscore pk primary key so we want to make that range number you put it in parentheses we want we want to make it a what we want to make it our primary key so now that is a constraint at the table level. Okay, so that is now, we have looked at creating the table constraints, etc, etc. Now we're going to look at modifying a table structure. Now modifying essentially involves altering the table. So altering the table is done in three ways. You can modify a table or a column. You can add, sorry, you can modify a column. You can um, add a column and you can also drop a column. So when you're looking at modification, those are the three things that you can do. Modifying a column, you can modify a data type, you can modify a constraint, you can modify the domain. Then you can add columns or constraints, and then you can also drop columns or drop the constraints. So generically, when you want to add a column to a table, that's the gen generic syntax. You alter the table, and then you put the, the column. You add a column. So essentially, what you're doing is saying that 
alter table, the table name, then add the column name and the data type. Please remember that the column has to have a data type because the data type is the one that defines the format within, sorry, the format of the data that you're going to store in your database. So for example, you say alter table student, add email. Now the email is the column that you're going to add to the table called student, which is a virtual and it is 15 characters. If you want to delete a column in your, in your table, you can, this is the generic syntax, you alter table, then the table name, then you drop the column name. The difference between the last and the first, the first one, the, the first slide and this one is, when you are creating the column, you have to identify the data type. But when you are dropping or when you're deleting the column, you don't have to specify the data type. So in this case, you say alter table students drop column email without having to specify the data type. Then to change the data type of a column in a table, again, you use the alter statement. So you say you alter, you give us the table that you want to alter. Then you modify the column, the column, then column name and the data type. Okay, so in this case, you could say, um, I, I didn't give an example here though, but you can say alter table student, modify column range number, okay? And then you just put the data type, in this case, you can say um, um, integer, okay? That is what you're trying to, to, to change or to update. Then adding a constraint after a table is created. So adding a constraint, for example, you want to add a primary key or you want to add a unique constraint, whatever, after the table has been created. Also, that is possible. So we are saying that the generic syntax is you alter the table and the table name. In this case, our table is students. Then you add the constraint pk underscore students. Okay. Now the pk is the, is the constraint you want to add students is the table name and in brackets that is what you want to add that's the registration number or the id number whatever it is so that is what you want to add i want i don't want this recording to go beyond 15 minutes i'm already done with 12 minutes i want to do only two recordings for this session um these are the other kinds of uh, structures that you can modify you can try them out you can try you can try out uh, how you can add a check constraint how you can add a unique constraint how you can do all those other things um so um we're saying that the modifying the table structure the not null constraint is added by modifying the column that is to be defined as the not null for example this is also just an example of adding a not null constraint which is um which is also um a continuation of the other so adjustment to populated tables is more restrictive. In other words, it becomes very hard to adjust the table structure if you have already populated the data in the database because you have, you, it's going to be hard. Because the first rule is you have to make sure that you do not violate the nature of the data that is stored in the database. So for example, if you have put not null, yet originally in your data you have so many spaces uh, you have so many values that you didn't enter, then that is going to violate the nature of the data that you have in the database. If you have, if you're putting primary key as you're adding a constraint called primary key, and yet in, in your database, you have this particular column where you have repetitive uh, values, then also that is going to bring um, a, a problem with your data. So you have to be very, very careful. Um, if you want to remove a table from the database, you use the drop table and then the, uh, the table name. So if you want to remove that table, you say drop table students. <clears throat> okay, so this is a, a simple quiz that you will that you will look at and try to identify why does this statement fail to execute. If you try it out in your DBMS, you'll find that this statement will not execute. My question to you next time when I have a live session with you, why is that statement not running? Okay, I expect to have some answers. Then identifying errors in a statement, alter table student, add student, student name etc. I want you to identify the error in that 
particular statement. Still, we shall do that uh, when I have a live session with you. So what I employ you to do is you're going to go and create these tables using the, using the information that I have given you and what you have in your chapter. Please go and create all those tables. My 15 minutes have